Hello viewers and welcome to The Icon. On today's show, I have a very special guest whom I would describe as a woman for women. She can be rightly called a global citizen, a person who is well aware of a society and community who makes sure that, you know, not just by profession, but also by vocation, she contributes in every means that she can towards the upliftment of her community. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me the joy of introducing Dr. Vidhu Sharma. Namaste Vidhu Ji. Hello everyone and namaste to everyone. Thank you so much for coming on the icon. Thank you so much for having me Sharma. Absolute pleasure. Well, um, we know about you as a person who is, you know, very proactive in the community and um, that proactiveness that you have, you know, shown has actually reflected in the uh, Community Citizen of the Year Award as well for you this year. Thank you so much for your kind words, Shyama. Uh, yes, uh, God's been kind and I've been very, very fortunate. I've got this opportunity to sort of give back to the community and uh, yes someone somewhere recognized those efforts and yes on australia day in 2020 i was awarded the community citizen of the year here uh, in australia well dr vidu what i've noticed is uh, this year has been quite grim for everyone however you have decided not to take a back seat. You have, you know, been very active during this period as well. You have tried to, you know, co contribute in every way that you can to make sure that your community is happy and healthy primarily. Could you elaborate on this? Uh, yes, uh, what I would like to say is, you know, yes, it's been a very challenging time for everyone and it still is and that's globally. But uh, another uh, very significant thing that we learn from circumstances like this is that uh, life is so unpredictable and also at the same time life is very short. You are not here forever. It's the journey and how and what you make out of that journey I think is very important. So. Um, the passion and desire to even give back more to the community uh, at the moment is probably rocket high and um, at its peak in me and uh, I'm a true believer in the almighty and I think uh, God's been kind enough to give me some opportunities uh, so that uh, I can assist and work with my fellow workers and sort of uh, help them in every little or every possible way that I can. Right. Talking about the causes that you have, you know, been most passionate about, you've taken a lot of interest in women's interest, um, or ensured, uh, you know, uh, to work with prevention of domestic and um, um, violence at home. Um, how did this cause become so dear to you? Like, how, how did you feel that this is what you need to put your energy into? Uh, see, Shama, my journey actually started uh, originally in India and mm -hmm. then of course uh, in New Zealand and uh, now both in New Zealand and Australia. So what I felt was, especially coming from the Indian uh, background, and what I felt was that, um, uh, you know, the sensitive topics like domestic and family violence it's uh, hard for the community to actually identify and recognize and then relate with. Uh, what I felt with my work with the women's uh, refugees and shelter homes and safe homes, um, you know, when it comes to domestic and family violence, what I thought was uh, people are still struggling to understand whether they are going through or whether they are victims of domestic violence or not. So the awareness of domestic and family violence is very, very important. So, uh, you know, uh, being a bilingual community ambassador in one of the roles that I have, I do take initiatives to sort of um, work within the community to organize awareness programs because uh, someone somewhere might be needing and wanting that much um, you know, needed help 
at the time but probably they don't know where to go there's a lot of help uh, available out there the government here is remarkable absolutely but it's the awareness um, that we all need to work towards so that people benefit from them you know these uh, situations and the uh, initiatives by the government so i try and organize these uh, uh, community programs community events which definitely are free for people to attend uh, so that they get a better understanding and especially uh, more towards where they can uh, seek help so you mentioned being a uh, bilingual and you know using uh, is that does that mean that you have you know uh, you use another medium other than english to help people of a particular community uh, yeah see uh, there's a little bit of an upper hand because of course as i said earlier coming from india i do speak hindi and also i do speak the regional punjabi language so yes it gives a bit of a benefit so if i am dealing with clients from the punjabi community in particular uh if the need be to make them more comfortable and uh, to build that trust relationship yes if there is a need i can speak um, in three languages uh, you know to better assist beautiful um, in fact uh, there's a reason why i asked you that i think you know coming from an indian background um i think the uh, you know the system of indian culture you know doesn't really recognize violence in any other form you know it's perhaps uh, only physical violence that we are you know you know used to or you know we know it as a form but um, like you said you know making it making people aware of the different kinds of uh, domestic and family violence um, we understand that there are so many uh, branches and roots to this you know and um, uh, you know violence in forms of uh, you know verbal abuse and much deeper you you'd pr probably know better for the sake of our viewers you know could you just you know um, throw some light on it uh surely yes very rightly said shama uh violence is not just physical violence but most of the people as they recognize and understand violence for them it's like physically beating someone up or hurting someone physically probably is violence but there's so much more to that you know um it's it's mainly the psychological abuse that happens and sadly but truly it happens in closed doors so you know what goes on in families in their homes uh, only uh, the people involved uh, directly know and another major part as i said earlier is perhaps they don't even recognize or identify that whatever way they are treating the other person is not the right way so physical injuries physical violence uh, probably they are visible they are visible so someone can identify even looking at you and maybe ask you if you need help but psychological abuse is something that's going on inside a small example is even controlling someone um as to what they want to wear telling them off for wearing what they are wearing and not allowing them to wear so it can be as simple as that how much it damages uh, the other person you know who's who's a victim and then uh, another uh, you know part of domestic violence is it normally comes from your close ones so you are emotionally involved in uh, uh, you know like affectionate relationship most of the times with that person so and um, it's it's also sometimes children are involved so it's a vicious cycle and it's so hard to get out of it first identification yes whatever i'm experiencing uh is not the right way someone can treat me and then it necessarily doesn't mean you break your home or family life no sometimes things get corrected if you start standing up for yourself and it takes a lot of courage definitely and uh, it's not easy and a lot of support a lot of support and it's not easy you know in simple one sentence it's it's a difficult thing even to make that choice but uh, yes once you do uh, awareness programs uh, also tell the community that you are not alone in the journey mostly for the migrants uh, you know i have migrated from india uh, many many years ago for migrants it's limited help available because family and friends you leave behind and then you start a new life 
in a new country so kind of that support is not there but still to uh, let the community know that there's a lot out there you can benefit from uh please come up and we are here to help Hats off to the work you're do- doing. In fact, uh, you know, to the num- many number of women that we lose every year to family and domestic violence, um, you spreading awareness and you know helping and supporting people in need is such a great um, effort from your side. Um, we do, in fact, applaud your uh, effort and recognize that. Thank you so much for sharing that part with us. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Vidu, I was actually going through your website and I understood that, you know, uh, the way you treat Ayurveda, you know, you see Ayurveda recognizes, um, you know, every person to have a particular type of energy, the three gunas or the three levels of energies, um, saying Sat Guna, Rajasik Guna and uh, Thamasik Guna. Uh, Well, connecting that and personalities. Uh, do you think uh, everyone is born with a particular guna and you know they retain that guna throughout their life? So it's uh, I, I'm uh, I'm gonna speak uh, uh, more about the basic principles of Ayurveda. So there are three doshas. So vat, pit, kaf, as we call in the Ayurvedic terminology. So yes, each and every person is born with a different constitution of these uh, doshas. And um, so to call it, if it's a state of balance of those doshas, we definitely have a happy and healthy life. But wherever the doshas imbalance and that imbalance can be brought about right from our, whatever is happening in our journey of life. And, um, you know, uh, the truth is that we all are unique and individuals. Um, who have come from various different backgrounds and our journey is unique to us. So whatever circumstantial changes uh, might have happened, what you're going through right now might actually have an impact on the balanced doshas and then the imbalance starts to come in. And with the imbalance what happens is some kind of ailments or illnesses uh, on the Uh, physical body comes in. Now, I would also like to mention that, uh, uh, you know, health is not just physical health. There are so many domains of health. So in order to be called healthy, you know, physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and even culturally healthy. Uh, I am an educator in uh, mental health and also in Ayurveda. Um, So I, 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 you know, um, I love giving out that information to the students that do not just focus on physical health. There's so much more to being healthy. So Ayurveda is one science that caters to holistic approach. You know, um, Ayurveda actually is uh, not just a science, it's a way of living. You make Ayurveda a part of uh, your daily regime right from you know, as simple as drinking water, the importance of drinking water and how much to drink and when to drink. You know, there were there were times when um, people would say that um, eating the right kind of food, of course, online, there's all sorts of information available, what to eat, different colors, you know, vegetables and fruits. But it's also important according to Ayurvedic principles as to what to eat, how to eat and when to eat. You might be having a plate full of the most healthy uh, food and ingredients, but if you're not eating it at the correct time, cooked in a correct way, it's going to have an impact on your doshas. So those basic principles of Ayurveda, uh, as I say, holistic approach and overall shaping up. That's what Ayurveda does. And that's the beauty of Ayurveda. And that's how Ayurveda, not just because I'm a qualified Ayurveda practitioner, but um, it's so close to my heart because I have not just practiced, but I've also, uh, you know, um, I've, I've incorporated those principles in my daily living and I sort of have benefited from it. So I love spreading the world around. If I have got help from Ayurveda, I'm sure others should try. And, oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. In fact, I understand the concept of the tridoshas or the you know uh, the different com- you know, compositions of the body. Uh, but again, back to the guna that I was asking you about. Uh, does you know does the, does a combination of dosha create these kind of uh, personalities or mm-hmm. the, the, the 
silent yes. or the calm personality, the excited personality and the lazy personality? So yes, combination uh, of doshas. So that is why dosha analysis would tell you that. But coming to the gunas, yes, the type of personality you have would depend on the gunas as well. So sattvic food, uh, like, you know, most of the focus is on um, vegetarian food. So how that calming effect brings in um, with uh, what we eat and how it has an impact internally on us definitely would be reflected in the personality that we have. Dr. Vidhu, if so, I may ask, uh, when they talk about sattvic food, according to principles of Ayurveda, you're not even supposed to refrigerate food. Um, however, you know, in, in the current scenario that we're living in, especially uh, living uh, in Australia, uh, including the milk that we buy is um, pasteurized and, you know, off the, off the free, uh, fridge or refrigerated section. Uh, many of the products that we consume are often, you know, uh, from the refrigerator. So, uh, can I say that, you know, we cannot follow a sattvic diet here unless you're going in for, you know, raw food and uh, fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables? Uh, Shama, you are right in saying what you just said. The fact is uh, we should make the best out of what we have. Yes, it is. If we, if we compare our lives to probably, uh, you know, previous generations, uh, there has been a change in the quality of life, definitely. More, we talk about stress these days, isn't it? More and more stress has been added and there are reasons right from the examples uh, you gave about refrigeration uh, you know even using microwaves to heat the food is another example so what i also would like to say here that uh, there is a major drift in the way the society is thinking now people are getting back to older ways i at the moment i know so many people who have just totally given up the use of microwaves for example you know no one in my family would uh, keep water in the fridge you know like cold water even though it's um, if it's hot weather just a trend of having a cold drink or cold water so that small change so as i said people i think with the change in the mindset and the awareness of how health and wellness is important to us you know these things are happening it has a major impact, like Ayurveda would totally uh, recommend not to have anything cold, uh, you know, straight out of the fridge and obviously uh, not to um, heat anything in the microwave because the rays uh, would definitely have an impact on what you are eating. So yes, healthy ways were the olden ways and uh, gradually things are changing you know drinking water out of as we call it the indian language okay. the uh, you know and it has its own scientific significance we've all read about it in the schools isn't it the concept behind it and um, that's that's no doubt a healthy way yes this is so wonderful. In fact, you know, you're one of those first guests, um, you know, who have an Ayurvedic background, you know, who's throwing light on lifestyle and, you know, Ayurveda being a lifestyle, you know, and I totally appreciate that. I, I really love that concept about, you know, how, you know, you don't have to, you know, view Ayurveda as only a stream of medicine or, you know, uh, you know, you have to, you know, be forced into taking medicines or herbs or, you know, um, whatever preparation that, you know, Ayurveda recommends, but, you know, uh, viewing Ayurveda as a lifestyle. This is perhaps why you were chosen from, as a representative of Ayurveda from Australia for the World Ayurvedic Congress um, two years back? Uh, yes, it happens uh, every two years. And uh, yes, I had a wonderful opportunity representing Australia and global Dr. Vidhu, being an ambassador of Ayurveda, um, representing Australia is a great thing. But um, what have you personally felt about the current state of um, Ayurveda in Australia? We know that uh, Ayurveda has not been recognized as a stream or a branch of medicine on its own, while you know other uh, natural remedies have al already got that recognition. Uh, what do you think about it? What can be done? Uh 
see uh, shama uh, when you say uh, you know representing ayurveda yes i got a wonderful opportunity on uh, a platform to you know uh, take up ayurveda globally and uh, spread the word around especially as to what's happening in australia um uh, you know there is actually a lot happening out there uh, then probably uh, you know so i would like to share some light on it uh there is definitely a group of wonderful uh, ayurveda practitioners who are wholeheartedly working as a team and are very passionate to uh, get ayurveda its uh, much needed recognition here in australia uh it's it's uh, recognized in a lot of ways uh being an educator myself here you know uh, the government recognized advanced diploma of ayurveda courses are being run here in australia so obviously there is some kind of recognition otherwise those courses would not have been running for years and years and uh, another thing is if we compare it to the mainstream uh, medicine you know ayurveda is a total separate branch and now it's it is getting that rec- recognition of a stand alone system of uh, medicine where a holistic approach is used and the clients are benefiting from it so there's a lot of happening a lot of things happening especially when it comes to awareness programs on ayurveda workshops being run seminars being organized the information being given out and uh, people believing in the science and that's all happening in australia and more on more and more work is being done and uh, hopefully fingers crossed you know as i said uh, the team is working we might uh, in the future years to come have a bachelor's uh, degree of ayurveda happening here in australia yeah wishful that's, thinking uh, that sounds like so, great news for the ayurvedic practitioners in australia that's wonderful thank you thank you uh, dr vidhu as a final question ayurveda for wellness your center in perth um I I noticed that you know your, your concept of well-being uh, is amazing and um, you've also you know shown a lot of interest in ayurvedic uh, beauty products. Uh, could you elaborate on what these beauty products are? So relating uh, beauty with ayurveda you know uh, looking good outside and also feeling good inside is very important. So that's why the concept of uh, what we can eat and the same things we can use uh, uh, on our skin and for mental health of course um, you know you should be in the right frame of mind to feel good uh, and experience the beauty around you and inside you so for that the special use of ayurvedic oils use those oils on the skin i've already given you an example of coconut oil unless somebody has an allergy to it that's a different story but otherwise just a vibrant and radiant skin and the feedback is excellent i think a person uh, who tries uh, ayurvedic products in their beauty treatments once perhaps very likely they'll never go back to the products that have chemicals and uh, the harsh uh, uh, products so uh, ayurveda has a beautiful side which is uh, the combination of uh, diet lifestyle beauty and you can make beauty products right straight in your kitchen i run ayurvedic cooking workshops as well and uh, yeah it's it's amazing and uh, it's it's also amazing to see how much interest people out there have and uh, how much they benefit from it what uh simple ingredients out of the kitchen that you can make a face pack and use it and uh, yeah things like that so Oh my um, Dr Vidhu I think you have so much more content that I could you know uh, have a, a seriously long conversation with you longer than what my episode would allow me um I I really love the idea of an ayurvedic w- kitchen workshop you know where you could you know help people with um, you know how they should cook uh, for a healthy lifestyle uh, we will definitely catch up soon on yet another episode where we could you know discuss more further on all these but thank you so much for joining us today for sharing your th- thoughts on the icon you are truly iconic and we salute the icon in you thank you so much shama and uh, thank you to your entire team for having me 
and i wish you all a happy and a healthy and a peaceful life thank you